I think one thing that's probably especially important for a traveling therapist is, is having a good website. Because a good website is going to be, it's sort of like your sign on the door, right, of your office. Like, it's going to be that for you out there on the internet all the time, whether you're in Istanbul or Costa Rica or Hollywood, Florida. Hi, I'm Kim Tolson, and I'm the traveling therapist. It's my passion to teach therapists how to navigate online private practices and multiple income streams so they can travel the world. I'm a digital nomad with a virtual insurance-based private therapy practice and a multi-six-figure coaching business. I'm obsessed with entrepreneurship and developing tools that can help therapists live an adventurous lifestyle. In this podcast, I will discuss my journey as a digital nomad, I'll chat with other traveling therapists, and help you navigate the complexities of running an online insurance-based practice. I'm so glad to have you with me on this journey. So your practice is all online. You love to travel. Now what? I'm so excited to announce the Traveling Therapist course waitlist is open for signups. I've put together a comprehensive course showing you how to travel the world, fund your traveling obsession, and still see your clients. In this course, you'll learn from actual traveling therapists that are already making this lifestyle a reality. This bundle course includes 20 plus trainings from therapists that are already doing it. Myself, developing multiple income streams to fund your traveling obsession, Patrick Casale, how to take one week off every single month, Amber Lida, how to have an online therapy practice and travel the world, she's the expert in this, Lisa Lovelace, how to run an online group practice and work from anywhere, Janine Wolf, seeking peer support while you're on the road, Megan Gunnell, how to scale your practice up to earn more income so you can do more traveling and enjoy the places you're actually visiting. Jenny Schottmiller, business deductions while you're traveling. Cindy Gonzowski, how to manage different relationship styles while you're traveling. Jen Hyatt's talking about how to navigate time zones and stay sane. She was actually navigating, I think, three or four time zones at the same time at one point. She's an expert in this. So there's so many trainings, I can't even list them all here, but I hope you'll hop on the wait list. People that are signed up as early birds on the wait list are going to get access to prizes and bonuses. So I hope you'll hop on the list. The link is in the show notes. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Traveling Therapist. I'm here today with Nick Fuller from iTherapy. Nick is actually a buddy of mine. I've actually invited him into my Build Like a Boss membership and my free Facebook group. I've invited him in to teach my audiences about SEO and marketing. So I was talking to Nick and we thought it'd be fun to bring him in on the podcast and talk about marketing and traveling and iTherapy and and just see where this conversation takes us. So (laughs) welcome, Nick. I'm so glad to have you here. Yeah. Hi, Kim. Thanks for having me. I saw that you're doing this new podcast and I was like, oh, great. Another opportunity to talk to Kim. I want to get on that, you know? <laughs> yeah, thank you. I love meeting up with you. Right. You have such great information. So why don't you just tell the audience a little bit about yourself and what you do? I know you're kind of a jack of all trades here, especially with working with therapists. You have a lot to offer. So I'd love if you tell everybody about yourself. Right. Yeah. Well, I think one of the first things I should say is I am not a clinician. You know, I think there's so many people that work in the space that are clinicians, but I didn't, I didn't, I'm, I was not a clinician first. I, I've come just uh, through helping clinicians and like I, almost all of my work is working with, you know, other therapists, but I, I'm originally from the technology background. Right. So for more than 10 years, I've been, I've had my own businesses doing basically building websites. Right. And that's kind of how I got into working with websites more, a little bit more now than five years ago, I kind of built my first website for a therapist and found that I really like doing that work. It's I really like working with therapists. They're, you know, great to work with. And then I got together with the company iTherapy. I did not found iTherapy. It was founded by a clinician as again, almost the companies that work with therapists are a clinician and her husband, but they're in there well, he's in his seventies and I can give him a hard time for being an old man. And uh, <laughs> he, he wanted me to buy him out. So I ended up doing that. So, so iTherapy oh, cool. is kind of my business now, but he, like I still get to go pick their brains, but yeah. So 
And just briefly, mm -hmm. you know, we, we do websites, but we also bundle together all the different tools that you might need. And we kind of help a little bit with marketing. So if, you, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, man, I really want to do this uh, traveling therapist stuff, then maybe check us out because we can get you set up with a lot of the stuff that you'll need in terms of teletherapy and that sort of thing. So. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Nick is awesome. You guys, uh, he actually has a course on SEO that I took and I'm going through it now again, Nick, just because <laughs> I, I now have the traveling therapist website up and I'm trying to optimize oh. it for SEO. And it's very helpful. I've really enjoyed the course and it's Nick's kind of a comedian as well. So he's got some pretty <laughs> funny scenes in the course. If you take it, <laughs> I'll try to make it fun. Right. Cause it could be a little bit dry. I don't think too many people are thinking like, man, I'm excited for SEO today, but you know, want to, want to, <laughs> I want to make it at least a little entertaining, but also informative and helpful. So. Yeah, I like it. So for the purposes of this podcast, right? So yeah. everybody listening is a traveling therapist or we're right. like obsessed with traveling. We want to figure out how to do it <laughs> and still see our clients. So I think it would be helpful if you could talk to us about like marketing tips, tricks to bring the clients in the door without a lot of hard work, really. Right. So we can actually like be traveling and seeing the world and not having to worry too much about the marketing piece. And, you know, like I know a lot of people, especially in the beginning, really struggle with how do I bring new clients in? So I think it'd be helpful if you could talk to us a little bit about that and some strategies to help the traveling therapist so we can spend more time traveling, less time marketing. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, so good questions. I think that the biggest one piece of advice I've heard is like, listen, there's a thousand different ways to market your practice. You don't need a thousand ways. You can, you know, you need maybe like five things that you can do consistently. Right. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that's probably especially important for a traveling therapist is, is having a good website because a good website is going to be, it's, it's sort of like kind of, you know, your, your sign on the door, right. Of your office. Like it's going to mm -hmm. be that for you out there on the internet all the time, whether you're in Istanbul or Costa Rica or Hollywood, Florida, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's pretty key, but I guess it like, if, whether you want to be a traveling therapist, anyone that's kind of starting a, a practice and wanting to market it, there are like a few steps I would go through. I want to run it kind of fast, but okay. the first thing I'd probably do is set up a psychology today profile. Now you're not going to okay. fill your practice with psychology today, but it's good because it gets you kind of in that right mindset and your limited character limit, it will give you like a little practice. And it's a good test case where you can start seeing, am I getting clients this way? Before even that though, you should think about who is your, your niche, who's your ideal client, right? Make sure that you're honed in on that. And probably if you think you're being too specific, you may not be specific enough, you know, mm. like you really want to kind of hone in. And especially if you're kind of working to bring people to you online, being specific is a great way to stand out. Everyone tries to be a generalist and, and then you're not really doing a good job of speaking to anyone. But if you're super specific of like, listen, I work with eating disorders or something or like bulimia with women, with this age group, you know? Okay. Now, like, especially, you know, we say this age group, like young twenties, they talk a certain way, right? They think a certain way. They have certain mm -hmm. kind of life challenges that they're going through that are very different from someone who's like, post-menopause 60 year old or something right absolutely so mm -hmm. so knowing who that client is is in key do that psychology today profile to get started because it's just a great place to kind of start honing that message and to start testing that message too is my message working right then kind of you can go and apply that to a website and then you can think about other kind of uh, marketing strategies like seo but also you know as you're niched like that Think about networking too. Think about, are there other therapists that I know that are, you know, maybe not working with the same exact uh, client, but, or mm -hmm. maybe they're working with like the same age group, but not the same presenting issue that I specialize in. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, then we can kind of refer to each other. Right. And that, yeah. it, you know, you can find those therapists also online, whether you're in Costa Rica or Istanbul or whatever, <laughs> you know, and uh, absolutely right. And, and kind of have a little zoom meet up with them, talk about them with uh, the idea of, you know, networking this way. And then just kind of cultivate those referral sources. So that's a lot, but you know, I wanted to kind of cover a, little, a fair bit of ground there. No, no, that's excellent. Yeah. And I, there are so many directories out there, it seems like, but yes. psychology today, I, I think is the premier one because their SEO is so good. Yes, I, I think, right. I mean, their SEO is crazy. Like you type in anything and psychology today pops up first. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. They've definitely done mm -hmm. a good job there. Yeah. They're, they're mm -hmm. on par with, basically the biggest and best websites in the world, their SEO is. Mm -hmm. but yeah. So it's crazy. You'll search like even something like therapists in Wilmington, where I live, Wilmington, North Carolina, and like the first result of psychology today. So, it, yeah. you know, why compete with that? Make it work for you, you know? 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what other marketing tips? I'm trying to think what else we can do to, you know, just, just bring clients in the door. I know a lot of people, at least therapists I talk to worry about niching down. And yeah. I heard a good tip. I, I don't know who it was from. Maybe it was from Amber Lida, where she said, if you're worried about that, pick like three or four different niches and you can even like write copy for each one and switch them up on psychology through day. So you can, you can change it a little bit, but still like for SEO purposes, marketing purposes, it's still going to, those keywords are going to pop out the eating disorders, 20 yep. somethings, you know, all yep. of that. So, so there is a benefit to that, even though it kind of freaks people out to really niche down all the way like that. Right. Yeah. No, I like that advice. I like that advice. And I would say kind of building on that. Yeah. If you like SEO can be a great strategy, you know, particularly mm-hmm. because it's going to work whether you're, you know, across the world or you're home or whatever, right? Um, yeah. it's, like it's not that hard. It just takes a little bit of kind of a little bit of knowledge and some effort, right? So I love that idea of like having a few different specialties, especially if they kind of relate to each other, right? Like maybe, mm-hmm. you know, maybe you talk about anorexia and bulimia just to kind of run with that uh, eating disorder thing, right? Yeah. So then, like, you know, if someone's searching for therapy for anorexia, then that, then your page on anorexia might show up. If someone's searching for therapy for bulimia help, then that page would show up. Right. And like Google's going to treat those different. Like those are different. Honestly, you could say like anorexia therapy and then anorexia counseling and and Google treats those as different keywords, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, having those kind of multiple things, especially if they're related, is good. I'd say like a couple things to keep in mind if you're doing it on a web page. One, every page on your site should have a minimum of 300 words. Mm-hmm. Google's looking for that. They want to, you know, if you have less than 300 words, they're just, it's not enough for them to understand what you're talking about. And yeah. Okay. That's a so, good tip. Right. Yeah. 300 words mm-hmm. on every page. And then make sure that your keyword is actually on the page and ideally in the title too. Yeah. I mean, those are some of the big things with the, with SEO and depending on like the difficulty of the keyword you're trying to rank for, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes that could be enough to start ranking for it. The other thing I would say is, is focus on local keywords. Like, you know, think in, in your instance, you know, maybe South Florida, right. I try mm-hmm. to rank for, mm-hmm. you know, anorexia therapy in South Florida, that sort of thing, because it's just going to be so much easier to rank for than, than just sort of the broad global without narrowing it down. But even like, if you're licensed in that area, you can rank for it and you can serve in that area. Even if you're, you know, you're, you probably won't be living in Hollywood, Florida, like two years from now, you know, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Starting February 2nd, we're moving. So we're going to be official digital nomads. It's going to be amazing and scary. You, and who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> do you know where you're going first? Yeah. First we're going to, um, oh God, Panama city beach. Yeah. In we're Florida. Gonna- that's in the yeah. panhandle, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're going to be That's- there for about two weeks. We basically just looked up like Airbnbs that were pretty cheap on the ocean. And we're just going <laughs> to use that <laughs> that uh, philosophy to take us yeah. places. <laughs> Different That's beaches all around the country. Yeah. 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 And Gulf Coast is actually kind of pretty. Yeah. I'm excited. I've never been up there. So we're just, we're just going to try to avoid that area during like spring break time. So yeah, th- yeah. we don't know where we're going to be during that time, but yeah. Have you ever been to New Orleans? Yes. That's like, yeah. I mean, just thinking about Gulf Coast and New Orleans is a fun city too. Yeah. We've kind of mapped out this little course we're going to take, like we're going to go up, up to the panhandle of Florida and then just kind of maybe like the Alabama Gulf Coast, like, uh-huh. and then Texas and um, what is that? San, San Pedro Island and okay. probably hit Houston. Cause my boyfriend loves Houston, you know, we've got a bunch of different places in mind. We're going to kind of work our way across, we think, and then end up in California for a little bit. And we're, we're taking our little, we bought this little red convertible. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So we're going to go in the convertible and just kind of live out of the trunk and see how it goes. <laughs> wow. Okay. So yeah, I mean, you guys, I mean, that's not even that like much, but sp- this is the thing, like I love to travel too. <laughs> But yeah. right now I have a nine month old traveling yes. in a convertible is not going to happen. That's not going to work. This is a two seater. <laughs> yeah, no, no. But that's so cool. That's, that's pretty fun. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, talking about marketing, I'm not really taking on new clients now, but you know, my traveling, I've been able to kind of put that into my marketing too, for like my courses and my different yeah. income streams, yeah. you know? So it's, it's been kind of cool to use that something I love as a tool to market myself as well. You know? So I think. Do you tell just, your therapy clients too, about like your, your traveling and. 
I do. They're, yeah. They've kind of been on the journey with me. That's cool. Most of my clients now were in office clients and they kind of like followed me from in office to telehealth. And then, you know, then I was like, Hey, I'm moving, but I'm going to take you with me. You know, I'll still be your therapist. <laughs> I'm just going to be in Florida. So that was an adjustment. And yeah. Now I'm kind of, they're kind of like, Kim, where are you today? So they'll ask me where I am. <laughs> like my backdrop might change, you know, and I'll say, yeah. oh, I'm in California. And they're, they, they, they kind of enjoy it. You know, that's we don't neat. talk much about it, but, but sure, they are sure. kind of on the journey with me. Yeah. That's, that's pretty neat. You mentioned, by the way, you mentioned in uh, your, you know, speaking of your marketing too, you mentioned in the year, that first episode, you have eight different income streams. You tell your audience a little bit about some of your different income streams. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's like, I was telling Nick before, it's like, sometimes <laughs> I have to stop and remember everything. <laughs> so, I have uh, the course I I uh, wrote for insurance billing for therapists to learn yeah. how to bill insurance on their own from my own sort of horror story. That's where that was born from. And most recently, I wrote one for virtual assistants and, you know, uh, admin assistants so they can become excellent billers because I feel like now I want to train those people as well to do a good job to serve therapists that need them. I've started a directory of billers. So that I've vetted personally. So I've interviewed them personally and I've checked three references and I've talked the references on the phone and everything. Cause I just feel so strongly about, you know, having good billers if you're not going to do it on your own. What a resource I bet that you had like years ago, right? Oh my God. All of this, all of this <laughs> is born from like, gosh, if I could have just like, you know, waved a magic wand and had this here, I would have yeah. used all of these resources. Yeah. So that's really where it's come from. And then you know, I started a membership site to support the therapists and the virtual assistants that need a little extra support. Cause some people learn from fine from just the course, but then other people, you know, they want to meet live. So we have live meetings like three times a month and we have a Facebook group and I do all these like little trainings. I just pop in the group and it helps with different things. So that's like a supplement to the courses. And what else? This is where I'm like, and what else am I doing? I'm trying to think, um, oh, the traveling therapist. Uh, I've started that whole brand now, which has been so fun because it really is my passion. I mean, insurance yeah. billing is great, but it's like not, I mean, I'm not passionate about insurance billing, you know, Sure. it kind of came out of a need, but the traveling part is just really yeah. what I've always wanted to talk about and try to help other people do. Nobody so, says if I won the lottery, I would bill insurance. They say exactly, if I won the yeah, lottery, that would, be, more, that would right? be my passion to learn how to bill insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So... So, you know, I'm shifting a little into this uh, traveling therapist thing. So I'm really getting into blogging and learning about like monetizing blogs and affiliates. And I've got a couple of affiliates I'm working with that are amazing. Um, I, I really support them. And it's also brought in good income for me. Yeah. And then I've got like the private coaching that I do. So that's another income stream. And then I've got my private practice that I'm doing. So I've got all these different things yeah. going on. That's cool. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. And, and all of it, of course, is all online, all digital, you know, <laughs> totally. Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. you know, obviously not a clinician, but some, some similar income streams. And it's like, I love it. I love being able to kind of take the laptop and, you know, go wherever I, I've literally like my years ago, my grandmother kind of fell ill. I lived in Florida. She lived in California. I picked up my laptop, packed a bag, went to California on a one-way flight. And I stayed there with my cousin for a month, just kind of hanging out with family there and having that freedom and that flexibility is so, so nice. No. Oh my gosh. It's so important to me. I, I just, I could never go back to, you know, where I was before I, I met Amber Lida, took her step-by-step -step course and all of that, you know, my little brick and mortar where I would just like see a million clients in a week and then take off two weeks for vacation, just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Now I can just go, you know, and it's just, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I'm glad you have that flexibility too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh... except for the nine month old <laughs> that, that changes <laughs> you know, things. But right. She's so I know. Cute. But I've yeah. Seen her. Yeah. That was, that was, uh, I knew that that would, uh, have some trade-offs, but, but it's, it's worth it. She's pretty awesome. Oh, she's amazing. Yeah. And I've interviewed <laughs> A couple of these episodes where uh, they're traveling full time with their kids, they're doing um, yeah. what do they call it? Unschooling. Have you heard of this? Where I haven't heard of unschooling. No, it's um, it's basically it's it's like homeschooling, but not really. It's like it's just learning from like your experiences, basically. And it, I don't know. There's a curriculum for it and stuff, and Is a lot fun? of these 
Yeah, a lot of these travelers are doing this unschooling. It's interesting. A curriculum for unschool. That seems yes, <laughs> seems seems ironic, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> or contradictory, I guess. <laughs> that's cool. I've seen too, like uh, one. So my favorite travel trip was to Istanbul, which maybe we could talk about if you want. But right I after my love uh, to hear about that. <laughs> right after my my wife, she she's a, a scientist in, in ocean science and she she came back to work and her boss was like hey we're leaving in like i think it was a week and a half to go on this like 10 day research cruise i want you to come and we're like oh, oh my God. right yeah so but at that t- so she was gone completely on that research cruise and i was at home with our our boy but while he was in school and stuff i think kind of as a, a way to kind of connect i started watching this youtube channels of these sailboat like digital nomads you know that just go all over the place oh, on a sailboat awesome and, so there's one where they do it with their kids and like it, yeah, they make it work, man. It seems really cool, but, That's but it's, I mean, it's, it's gotta be a lot easier when you're bringing your house with you, you know? Yeah, I know. I know that that's the part we're not too sure we're going to like it or not. It's just like <laughs> living out of one suitcase. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. In, in different places. And uh, you know, like, are we going to miss everything? Like our creature comforts, you know, so to speak. So well, this is going to be I mean, a big experiment. Some of your, some of the places you're staying at look like they're not short on creature comforts, right? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Part of, <laughs> yeah, part of it is we're staying in those Inspirato properties that, yeah. that um, I don't even know how you explain it, like high-end luxury uh, travel properties. They are like beyond amazing. Like a, it's like, I could never afford to actually live here personally, but <laughs> with the travel club, I can. That's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. So tell me about Istanbul. Yeah. So that was awesome. My wife went to school at USF and her roommate is originally from Istanbul. So, right. They, then they've been friends. They're like best friends since, uh, since college. So we got to, we (laughs) like, you know, her, her friend had always talked to my wife about coming to visit and whatnot. And I was like, can we, and she's like, hell yeah. (laughs) This was all pre COVID. So, so yeah, we like, we, the most expensive part was the flights, but this was awesome. I think this is, you know, if you're thinking about traveling at some place, check out what like the cost of living is and the exchange rate, because that was one thing that was kind of exciting. <laughs> like I felt rich awesome. there, you know? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Like the exchange rate is like five Turkish lira to a dollar. And, wow. uh, and you can buy like some street food for like a couple lira, you know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh it my was, gosh. Yeah. I felt rich. Like it was, it wasn't cheap, like the flights getting over there, but once we were there, it was awesome, but it was, yeah. So we were staying with my wife's roommate's family. They were wonderful, gracious, very kind hosts. And of course my wife's roommate, her best friend was our tour guide the whole time. So wow. she, right. She took us to like these incredible historic landmarks. There's like, it we used to be a, like a Roman hippodrome where they would do chariot races Oh and that's, God. yeah. So that's still kind of there. And in the middle, there's like an Egyptian obelisk. There's this huge, very famous, it used, it was originally built as a cathedral and then it became a mosque. And then it was a museum called the Hagia Sophia. Wow. We went in there and it was like, it's incredible. There's this, like, I mean, me being the kind of nerd I am, like there's this <laughs> part of the ground that's like in, in that cathedral, that's um very ornate and it's roped off. And like the plaque says, this spot is where the emperors of the Holy Roman, Holy Roman Empire were coronated right there. Wow. Oh my like, gosh. I think that's super neat. You know, <laughs> that is really cool. Oh my God. <laughs> How so amazing. A, yeah. It's an incredible city. If you ever get the chance, I definitely recommend. I mean, oh, for, gosh, for us, it was to. like, you know, a very special having kind of the friend as a tour guide, but I think like, you know, Eddie, it, it, it was cool. It was cool. Yeah, that makes it so much better having a tour guide. I love, like if I go to city, I love to try to like hop on a tour, at least like a walking tour. Right? Yeah. So fun. And some sometimes in the cities, I can't remember what it's called, like city app or something. You can download these free like walking tours. Have you ever done those? And you've listened to them as you walk through the city. I haven't done that yet. I'm going to have to look for that. It's very cool. I'll I have think- to look up the app and tell you, I can't remember the name of it. Our favorite thing right now, especially since we only moved to Wilmington, North Carolina, like a little bit less than two years ago. So Mm -hmm. like, we love just kind of still just like kind of being a tourist in our own city and like our own area, you know, Mm -hmm. just doing like these short little day trips and finding things and, you know, so. So fun. Yeah. Right. A lot easier with a nine month old. (laughs) 
Yeah, I've been trying to go somewhere. Oh my gosh, for sure. It's like such an amazing trip. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That first episode of your podcast you're mentioning, was it somewhere in Cabo? Cabo, Cabo San Lucas? Cabo San Lucas. And you were hanging out with a friend of yours. Was, was your friend, your tour guide over there for you? He was a little bit. Yeah. yeah. She, she kind of hooked us up with a couple of places and showed us around like the local stuff, which, That's cool. you know. Sometimes it depends on the city. Sometimes I'll be real adventurous and I'll just go check stuff out. You know, <laughs> some I don't know for some reason in Mexico, at least that part of Mexico, I was a little unsure about it. But she's like, "Oh yeah, come on!" And we're just like walking around the city. It just it's it's cool to go with the local. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, that was I couldn't agree more. <laughs> like whether it's yeah, like a kind of a paid tour guide, which I think is nice for the, you know, the audio that you were talking about, but especially if you have like a friend that's in the area, oh man, yeah. then you're going to find the spots, right? Yes. And we've done so many different, like, I like guided trips, like cruises and, you know, where there's like an itinerary and different stops and, you know, you've got like five hours here, here's what to see. I really like that stuff. We took a, like a, it was like a Greyhound bus almost like through uh, Spain and Portugal. And wow. it was so awesome. You know, it's kind of, it was kind of rushed because like you were there a day, yeah. you got on the bus, you drove eight hours, then, you know, another hotel, another city, that kind of thing. But I really enjoyed that. You can see like so much so fast doing yeah. that. And it's like, it's like you make really good friends with the people you're on, like the, the tour with, you know, which is so fun to me. Have you ever seen these uh, European river tours, river cruises? Yes, like the Viking I did one. You did, yeah? Yeah. Yes. Oh, God. Now I'm going to, like, where do we go? We went to, like, Vienna, Germany, uh, Switzerland. What, what was it? The Rhine, oh, it, Rhine cool. River Cruise. Yeah. Rhine, Rhine River Cruise. Oh, it was amazing. It was a Viking cruise. That's, like, I wouldn't usually spend that much money, but my, like, it was with my dad and his friends, and they were all spending the money on it. So I was like, all right, I'll just do it. <laughs> and um that that thing is nice like if you have yeah. the money to go on a like a viking it, it's like 140 people on this little river boat they like make all your meals custom which is really big for me because i have celiac disease i can't have dairy i can't have eggs so it's like hard for me to eat a lot of times when i travel mm-hmm. but every like city we went to the chef on the viking ship actually like made me a meal that was like local to that place, but to my accommodations, oh, like, wow. like schnitzel, you know, it's got eggs yeah. and bread and all that. He like made it gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free for me. It was like amazing. So that's so cool. Yeah. It, I, I couldn't believe it. That's like the thing that really stood out to me on that, on that trip for sure. <laughs> I've seen those Viking cruises and like, that looks cool. I was disappointed to learn that they are, well, I mean, this is probably a good thing for some people, but they, yeah. they are no kid zones, you know? Oh yeah. yeah, I guess not. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes sense. I mean, for kind of like the vibe that I get, they're, they're trying to kind of be sort of mm-hmm. a sophisticated adult, you know? Yeah. I get yeah. there's got to be a different river cruise that I'll have, let you have your kids. I know like there the, has the to be Disney ocean cruises. It's like they're, they're super <laughs> yeah. for families, you know, but. Oh, those are fun. I bet those are really awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're using the Airbnb to kind of find different places that you're going to be staying while you're driving in the convertible. Yes. And, and between the Inspirados. So yeah. like the, the way the Inspirados work, it's like um, you can't book your next one until the last day of the one you're in. Oh. So yeah, so that's kind of how they space it out. Cause otherwise you could pretty much just live in these things. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so you can't book it till the last day. So by then there's like a little bit of a waiting period. So we're going to do the Airbnbs between the Inspirados, yeah. but yeah. it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be really up in the air because you never know what's going to be available like on the yeah. Inspirado. So it's going to kind of just take us as we go so it's like Again, like yeah. totally have no idea where we're going to be <laughs> the flexibility you have definitely works out well there that's pretty interesting because yeah yeah I mean, you know it sounds like you have no opportunity really to plan ahead with inspirato solo you know mm-hmm. well, that's cool yeah it is cool yeah what were have you, you ever say? done go ahead sorry no i was gonna say what were you gonna say <laughs> <laughs> have you ever done um like booked different experiences on airbnb yeah, a couple of them. Like one time we did the, um, it was like a ghost tour. We did that once, you know, you can like do these like yeah. added excursions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever done that? Yeah. Yeah. So probably my other like top two trip was I went to Puerto Rico 
that was oh, awesome yeah yeah that's another great place highly recommend have you probably been to, have you been to uh san juan puerto rico no i've never been to puerto rico have you been to saint augustine florida yes did you that's like where san... i went on the ghost tour <laughs> yeah yeah you like saint augustine <laughs> yeah then you'll definitely like san juan you know oh cool it's, it's pretty like... much the same it's, it's like, yeah, right. I think it's a lot the same, but bigger. And it's is like, uh, you know, a little bit kind of older, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. And like old San Juan it definitely has a lot of St. Augustine vibes for me. Yeah. did like a couple Airbnb experiences there. So one of them was this like culinary tour. That was super fun. Right. That is awesome. All right. We went to like seven different like restaurants and whatever and just like try like one little dish or have like one little drink and you're just walking through like walk all of historic old san juan and like eating amazing food oh wow oh that sounds so good the other one was super cool also like different but the so the guy that was doing that tour is like the uh, he's an architect and he's the head of like the old San Juan historic society. Okay. And this one was all about like old San Juan, like hidden places, you know? So we went into like the, the state department building and he showed us where back in the day, like the Spanish government used to put like gold ingots they were bringing back to Europe. Like we went like under this, uh, this church and like seeing stuff there up on top of a hotel at this like beautiful little bar that they had there, but you definitely had to know that it was there to get to it, you know, because, oh, wow. you know, it was, yeah, it was, <gasps> oh, it was that. a journey, you know, it was neat. He took us on some, some hidden places, you know, Oh, that's so cool. Oh, yeah. see, I love a tour. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. yeah, I'm with you because like I would never have, you know, gone to those places on my own. Yeah. Oh, fun. that's so fun. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I could just talk to you about this all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. well, I, I so, mean, yeah, but the fact that we're able to do this and have this freedom, just take our laptops, bring our businesses, you know, it's uh it's incredible. I know. I know. Love that and you're that's, teaching this. That's, really that I hope what people get out of this is like, you can do it. I mean, even if you're not a therapist, Nick's, Nick's not a therapist, but he's <laughs> figured it out too. You know, this entrepreneurial type spirit and <clears throat> doing your own thing, being your own boss, being able to live wherever you want to live, do it, however you want to do it. Yeah, It's just amazing. I love it so much. Yeah. People are scared, but it's, you know, if you, I feel like if you just have the passion for something, you find something you have a passion for and you, just put some, some energy and time into it. It will manifest and you can live that life that you want to live, you know? No, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. You have the passion, put a little effort. You can make it work, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, Nick, thank you so much. This has been such a great talk and it's... I'd love, would you let them know where they can reach you if anybody wants to reach out and have, you know, SEO done on their <laughs> website or talk to Nick about his SEO course, where would yeah. they reach you? Yeah. Actual business. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about our business. <laughs> uh, yeah, if this place is itherapy.com, that's, you know, a letter I and word therapy. Again, we do, you know, if you're thinking about this and um, we'll, we'll, and you're new to all this, we have a lot of things to try to make it easy. We can bundle together the different services you need, HIPAA compliant video chat, HIPAA compliant email, HIPAA compliant phone, and uh, an EHR, electronic health record, where you can keep everything, process your payment, all that sort of stuff. If you get that through us, we also offer one-on-one -on -one training so that you feel comfortable with all that different software. And we offer a clinical consult peer group, which I think is very nice. One of the few things that can be a downer about working online and working from home or wherever you happen to bring your laptop. Traveling. Is, yeah. Right? It can be lonely sometimes. Exactly. It can be isolating. It's not like you're in that sort of group practice where you can just walk down the hall and be like, Hey, you know, I got this one client and I'm just really not getting through to him. Like, what do you, you know, mm -hmm. well, that's what this clinical consult peer group is for, you know, it's oh, a chance cool. to kind of, yeah, get together and chat, pick some brains, maybe hear about a different modality approach for something you're working on, some client you're working with, all with other licensed professionals, of course. So that's kind of our main suite of services. We also offer websites, a couple different options there. If you want a little help building your own website, I have a course. You want uh, kind of a standard website, we can build that for you. You write the text content, we put it together, and it's a pretty... It's a very affordable option that way with the course and with that standard option, it's with Squarespace and the, the annual fees for that are not that different from the monthly fees that you'll pay with kind of other services, you know, mm -hmm. um, but we do have a premium 
service where that is kind of a higher monthly service. But with that, we're offering kind of a high level of service where we're going to write all your content for you. We'll do a little bit of the SEO work for you ahead of time and show you kind of what to do to kind of improve your SEO also. But of course, your site together, we we, we do a lot there for that service. Um, and then lastly, yeah, the different marketing things we can kind of work with you on, try to help you out, make sure you're kind of going in the right place. So if any of that sounds appealing, yeah, it's itherapy.com. We'll be happy to talk to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nick. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. Thanks for doing this. I'm excited to hear more of the podcast and more stories of people traveling. It's going to be fun. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Traveling Therapist podcast. For show notes, links, and downloads, head over to thetravelingtherapist.com, where you'll be able to learn more about my journey, the courses I've created for you, and other exciting resources to make your dreams become a reality. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share with your traveling therapist friends, subscribe to the podcast, and if you love this episode, please leave a review.